Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Um, today I'm just going to give you a few tips on soldering. Um, it's not going to be totally in-depth to NASA specs or anything. There's lots of videos on YouTube about that. But recently I've had a few requests just to, to um, let people know how I, how I go about making a solder connection. I guess some people have tried soldering and they end up blobbing, getting kind of a mess to it. So there's uh, really four main things to consider when you're when when you're soldering. A lot of times I'm just when I do soldering, it's on these low voltage uh, 12 volt uh, wiring, really thin wires. Um, most people use these uh, butt connectors. You'll see these in when people are installing stereos and different things in automobiles, um, and they're great. Um, um, if you get them crimped right, um, I don't trust them as much as solder myself. I just prefer prefer a really good solder joint over these. I find a lot of times um, these uh, crimp connections, especially all over RV, there's a bunch of where the factory has used crimps, and uh, I'm forever tracking down problems with them. So um, I just like a good old-fashioned solder connection myself. So what are the, the things to uh, consider when soldering? First, you want enough heat. That's one of the, the big things I find when people are soldering. Um, if your iron isn't hot enough, uh, a lot of times you end up, when you're doing a joint, you end up holding the iron onto the joint too long and you're transferring a lot of heat into the wiring and it comes back and starts to, starts to cause problems with the insulation, ins insulation around the wire and you just don't get a a good joint you end up balling up the solder so that's the main thing get yourself an iron that's that's hot enough for your joint um, I really like these just the old-fashioned Weller guns here kind of a double double trigger so you have hot, you have a kind of uh, extra max heat and that way if I'm doing a, a really heavy connector I also have enough heat for it um, where I can't plug in I really like having a little a torch uh, I can pick up one of these. This is the Ben Burnzomatic. It's a torch, but it also you can comes with a little uh, soldering attachment. So I actually used this just recently. I was installing a VHF radio in in Ann's boat, and they didn't have any uh, power at the wharf, so that was a, was a good thing to use. Only thing about using a torch, so you have to be careful around anything flammable. You don't want to use it near gas gasoline or propane vapors like that or you could blow yourself up. Um, another big thing with soldering is clean. Clean, clean, clean. You want a clean connection so you want the wire to be freshly stripped. You don't want to use an, an old piece of wire that's gotten oxidized because solder want, doesn't want to, doesn't stick to, uh, to oxidized metals and wires. Also the tips of your iron you want to, you want to clean them as well tin and clean them so you use a sponge usually is a good good thing to clean your tip I'll show you that when I when I do a demo here um, also a biggie is to use the right type of solder um, there's a couple different types the the best one I find is the good old uh, mix of lead and tin um, I like this Kester Kester solder um, kind of like this thickness here the uh, 1.2 millimeter and it's a it's a nice mix mix of uh, lead in it. Um, the new solder um, in a lot of the new new stuff they use a kind of a lead free silver solder, but I don't find it flows as nice. It's sort of like they've been mandated to use that in a lot of the new electronics. But I know when I was repairing electronics, half the problems were because of the new the new uh, solder. But you can still get this this lead solder. Just makes it flows nicer and makes a nicer joint. Also, this has flux built right into the solder, so inside the solder here is kind of a hollow core, and it's filled with a, a flux that, that cleans and uh, helps the, the solder flow as well. So that's a good brand there. And finally, you want to make sure before you solder that you actually have a connection that's mechanically sound to start with. You just don't want to hold the, the wires together and then pour solder on it. So it's good to... Uh, to wrap the, the the joint, there's a few ways to do it. Some people will will uh, will do a hook system. Other people will wrap it. Uh, I'll I'll show you the way I like to wrap it here. So I take the two pieces and cross them, and then wrap them opposing each other like this. 
this way it keeps it nice and even and then I can uh, get the shrink tubing across it really easy but basically you're trying to make something that's like I can pull on that and it doesn't want to come apart so you want to make something mechanically sound first and then later on you once when you apply the solder to it it'll even strengthen it more another tip for cleaning is uh, these fiberglass pens say you're uh, you have a surface that you, you want to solder on like you can see this one's a little oxidized here but these little fiberglass pins pens can be used to clean a surface really well also great for cleaning contacts so you can see that how it's cleaned up that that section there so that's important when I was doing a lot of electronic work circuit board work when I was going to uh, re-solder something I'd always make sure to to clean the surface really well like that okay so what we'd like to do is get the, the soldering iron underneath the wire apply a bit of solder and then you want to touch the solder to the wire not the tip of your soldering iron and do it quick the idea is to get a nice quick uh, solder on it and let it set up okay so you see that's made a nice a nice joint there and the idea is to have have the solder flowed right throughout the the wire there and not blobbing or anything or, or a cold solder joint so that one's a nice strong solder joint let's try one more here this time we'll use the, the torch well I got my torch fired up give it a good clean there There we go. Nice quick solder joint there. See the same thing, the solder has gone right through the whole joint. Not blobbing on top anywhere. So we've got another good joint there. So you can see the, the thing is to, like I say, have plenty of heat to your iron so the solder flows fast. You don't want the solder flowing really slow. Um, if you have enough, not enough heat, you're constantly trying to heat the wire and the solder is not melting. So you have a nice, really good heat and everything really clean. The tip clean, whatever you're trying to, trying to solder has to be clean. Also the right type of solder and a good mechanical connection. Now I'll, just, I'll show you how you, I can use the torch to put some uh, heat, heat tubing on it. Looks pretty good. There we go. Another thing I like to do, even when I've when I've done a crimp connection on something like this ring connector, I've I've used a crimper to crimp the wire in. But a lot of times I like to just double up and add some solder too. Just add a bit let it run right up into the joint the 
think it makes even a nicer connection. A tip if you ever need to remove some excess solder, this stuff called uh, Super Wick this is by MG Chemicals. So it's like a copper braided uh, line and it's got uh, flux embedded in it so just put it up to where you want to get rid of the the solder and it sucks it up. Just like so. There we go. Not too bad. Crimped, soldered, and uh, heat shrink tubing on it. Clean her all up and should be ready to go. Be a good connection. Well, there you go. There's some uh, quick tips. Just to recap, make sure you have plenty of heat. Make sure your iron can get hot enough to do the job. Um, like I say, I like this, this pull trigger one myself because I can do a lot of different size wires with it right up to, to really, really kind of heavy, heavy gauge. And uh, also this, uh, this one, nice portable torch because I can use it for doing the, the shrink tube and it works good. If I need to do a finer wire, I can always, always use that tip. Um, also, next thing is get your surfaces really clean that's that's a big thing make sure your your wires are clean or if you're soldering say onto something like this make sure it's got a, a clean surfaces on it um, the right solder like I say don't I forgot when I was saying that don't use silver solder but also don't use solder that's designed for plumbing you know like to put uh, copper pipes together it's it's not meant for this this type of job at all you want you want a, an electronic type solder um, and like I say, a good mechanical connection before you solder, so things aren't moving around while the solder is uh, is is um, setting up. And that's what happens a lot of times is you get the the solder in there, and then something shifts, and you get what's called a cold solder joint, not a really good mechanical connection. So anyway, there you go. Um, like I say, this is just a, a few quick tips. Someone asked me. I thought I'd I'd do a quick video for you. Um, if you want to learn more about solder, just go into YouTube and, and put in like Soldering 101 or How to Solder and you wouldn't believe how many videos are out there. So until next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com and Angelina B. Galena. What do you think of this joint? Did it work? Did it work? Yeah, it's not bad. I could do better than that. Cheers, everyone.